Hi, now here we have an example on solving a trigonometric equation. And uh, if you haven't done this already, uh, now's the time to have a go. Or if you've been struggling with it, then the work solution is going to be coming up in a moment. Now, in the previous part of this question, we had to show that 4 cosec squared 2 theta minus cosec squared theta was identical to sec squared theta. And now it says, hence or otherwise, solve for theta greater than zero but less than pi radians for cosec squared 2 theta minus cosec squared theta equals 4. And we've got to give our answers in terms of pi. So, how do we do something like this? Well, first of all, I'd want to just copy down the equation. So, we've got 4 cosec squared 2 theta minus cosec squared theta we're told equals 4. Well we've got to pick up on this identity that we proved earlier. This is identical to sec squared theta so I'm going to replace all of that with sec squared theta so we've got therefore sec squared theta is equal to 4. Now what is sec squared theta? Well it's the same as 1 over cos squared theta. So we can say that this is 1 over cos squared theta. Remember sec theta is 1 over cos theta. So if you square it you're going to get 1 over cos theta all squared. Which is the same as 1 over cos squared theta. And so that equals 4. Now I could rearrange this. I could multiply both sides by cos squared theta and divide by 4 and that's going to give me that cos squared theta must equal 1 quarter. And to get cos theta now I've got to square root both sides. So if I square root both sides I've got cos theta equals the square root of a quarter. And the square root of a quarter is going to be plus or minus. Don't forget that plus or minus when we're square rooting. Plus or minus a half. So we need to look at both types of solutions. So we can see that we've got 1 when cos theta equals a half and then we'll deal with the next one when cos theta equals minus a half in a moment. So when cos theta equals a half, to get theta we inverse cosine both sides. So therefore theta would equal the inverse cos of a half. Now I always tend to use a quadrant diagram, it's up to you. I always find quadrant diagrams a lot easier to work with than uh, graphs generally. So that would be 0 degrees and then I've got a positive value for cosine here, positive value of half and cosine is positive in the first quadrant and in the fourth quadrant. So I'd mark two lines equally inclined to the horizontal here and I'd mark in that these two angles were the same. So for solutions to this, possible values of a theta would be this one. Okay, that's a possible value for theta. And normally this one round here would be a solution. But we've got a range here that theta has to be between naught and pi radians. So to go beyond this line here would be to exceed pi radians. So I'm not going to bother with that solution. Now if you inverse cosine a half, I know that in degrees mode it's the equivalent of 60 degrees. So in radians, 60 degrees is pi radians, which is 180 degrees, the equivalent of. And then if we divide that by 3 we get 60 degrees. So it's pi upon 3 radians. So therefore we have theta equals pi upon 3. That angle in there, that little blue snippet in there, is pi upon 3 radians. The equivalent of 60 degrees. So I'll put that as rads for short. Now we've got to do when cos theta equals minus a half. So if we just put that in here, when cos theta is minus a half, 
We get theta by taking the inverse cosine of both sides. So we've got theta equals inverse cos of minus a half. And again, if we were to sketch a quadrant diagram for something like this, that being zero degrees, cosine is negative here in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. Again, I'd want to mark those two angles in as being exactly the same size. We're only interested in one solution because it's got to be between naught and pi radians and it has to be this turn round here. That's a possible theta. Obviously the other solution would have been normally to go all the way round to here but that exceeds pi radians. So we're just looking at this one. If you did the inverse cosine of minus a half you end up if you're in degrees mode with 120 degrees. And 120 degrees is the equivalent of 2 pi over 3 radians. Okay, 2 thirds pi radians. Theta equals 2 thirds pi radians. Remember, third pi radians represents 60 degrees. So 2 thirds, twice that amount, must be 120 degrees. Okay, well, there's our two solutions. Uh, you could summarize at the end. I haven't really got much room to squeeze that in here, but essentially there's one answer and there's another answer. So I hope that's given you an idea anyway on how to go about that one.